Welcome to the session on Tridium, the Intelligent Content Platform. I am Arpita Maiti, the Senior Product Marketing Manager for SDL Tridian, and I am here with my colleagues Joe Perman, Senior Product Manager, Tridian Docs, and Arno van Nijnaten, Senior Product Manager for Tridian Sites. Together we will look at how the new situation, the market changes, has given rise to new challenges and new demands, and what we envision is the answer together with SDL Tridian Vision in the next 30 minutes. Digitization and customer experience has always formed the basis for our product strategy. But the current situation and the pandemic has really impacted how organizations view their digital transformation projects and execute them. We see an acceleration of trends for both external and internal practices. The five key trends that are being catapulted in the current times and near future are as follows. Digitization of sales. Advancement in digital sales model for both B2B and B2C. And how can that be performed with more speed and agility? Second, better customer service. How can organization reduce redundancy? And how can their agents, the subject matter experts, be more engaged and provide better, richer, more in-depth, high quality information to the customers when and where it's needed? We are looking at less dependency on human agents and better resolution in shorter times. Third, employee enablement. People work from home. Teams are distributed. This has become a new normal. How can we enable teams and everyone with the right piece of information, not only secure manner, but also timely and with confidence? Fourth, IT agility. IT struggles to cope with the speed of innovation and the changing buying behavior. We have to provide them tools and agile models so that they can easily scale their operation as per business needs and in a very easy to, do, easy to manage manner. Fifth one. Automation and AI. We are seeing a heavier reliance and adoption of automation technologies and tools, conversational interfaces, and even AR, VR augmented services. So what does this all mean? In other words, these trends can be broadly classified into external and internal opportunities. External facing opportunities include reaching out to new audiences in new markets in their languages of preference, audiences with a new buying behavior, abruptive buyer journey, providing the right information to their abrupt journeys in the way of their preference, in their choice of media and choice of channel. How can we do that and in a very streamlined and easy to scale fashion? Looking internally, we can expect organizations to act more always on, provide on-demand information and services for their employees who are underpinned by automation, cloud infrastructure, and essentially be more data-driven. Content-wise, we are looking at increasing the consistency of the information and experiences which are, driv are driven by relevance and higher need for security and compliance. All of these new demands in turn boil down to three key essential things which an organization has to, has to tackle when it comes down to content. The three key challenges surrounding content in organizations are volume, quality, and fragmentation. The first is volume, simply the sheer amount of content that needs to be created, managed and processed to feed all the new digital channels and the additional set of challenges that arise when content creation delivery goals are met. If you scale up the content production by 100 folds, you can appreciate the problem it presents. Which brings us to the next issue that is of quality, which ranges from information which is simply good enough to the right information for the right person at the right time. And then there is everything in between. What's the level of quality that audience requires? And if, what happens if you provide them of much higher quality? Basically, you are wasting resources which could be used elsewhere. And of course, you can imagine the disaster when a very high quality information is expected and it is not delivered. 
and the third is fragmentation, which is almost a natural state for content when you scale up things, when you bring in people and processes. You must have encountered it yourself to wonder which version is the right one. Which led us to wonder, how can we further narrow down to the problem to tackle first? So in order to find out, we asked our customers in a poll in July 2020, what is their biggest issue? And the response was staggering. Fragmentation is the biggest issue for organizations. And it is quite insightful as well, because with fragmentations comes the issue of quality. And if the organizations are still battling with the issues of fragmentation and quality, they really have very little time to think about volume, even if the business demands so. Another related research revealed to us that an average of 14 systems or repositories are used by organizations. We can't really take out the silos, but we can learn to work with them. Although we can definitely learn to work with this complex ecosystem, it has to be made simple for everyone. Establishing an enterprise knowledge hub is one sing as one single source of truth can be the answer. With a solution in place for single sourcing of high value content, you can run various use cases. We see two distinct manners in which our customer base uses our solution. There is, of course, the traditional use case of using a digital workplace to empower employees internally. And this use case allows improvement in productivity, agility, and efficiency. All important when it comes down to saving cost for an organization and making it more productive and secure. The second very interesting use case is the one where organizations monetize their knowledge. They use subscription-based models to enable their user base and further their efforts to build, building a better brand loyalty and increased revenue. Here, the content itself is the product. Content drives the revenue. The common thread between the two use cases remain the definitive content. The whole supply chain approach for content production to its distribution and optimization remains the same. And we at SDL support both of these use cases and the shades in between. You can drive several benefits such as streamlining business workflows while maintaining compliance, bringing feedback and collaboration to the heart of the operation, and finally setting the platform for automation and business analytics. All of these prepare an organization to be ready for the future. Because as you can see with the diagram on the left, an enterprise knowledge hub, it connects to incoming data and content feeds and external applications. On the top right, you can see it enables organizations to collaborate both internally and outside the organization in a very streamlined fashion and gain feedback and put it into the whole system. One of the ways to ensure definitive information to have a tight collaboration and which is streamlined both within and outside the organization. And finally, in the bottom right, you can see it provides a foundation for better analytics across your business content. What is working, what is not working, as well as a foundation for automation and AI. Together with taxonomy and metadata, we enable organizations to build intelligent content. And moving forward, we are building semantic capabilities in our solution, which will truly transform how organizations work. Let's look at intelligent content. Intelligent content is the content which is inherently structured, has a predefined structure to it. It makes it predictable for a machine. It is atomic or modular in nature. It helps with the reuse of content. Next, we are looking at intelligent content, which is format free meaning it can be used on any number of channels very fluidly. Next, semantically rich, content which has meaning associated with it, with the help of metadata or even a knowledge graph, which will provide relations other than meaning to the content. And finally, tech connected, meaning the content can be easily integrated and used across various systems. Now, 
we will have a quick look at the various kind of use cases supported across our customer base. First of all, we will see the use cases of customers who are breaking and pushing the grounds of innovation with experiential and futuristic implementation of Tridian solution. These include customers who are incorporating next generation technologies such as AR, VR and cognitive technologies to their business and taking it ahead of the curve. The second category focuses on mixed collaboration, such as partner or franchise enablement. Some of these have even monetized or commercialized their models to generate revenue and act as a profit center. And final category are the organization who are championing employee enablement. We see them building an enterprise knowledge hub or a digital workplace for their critical business information needs and streamlining their operation to have efficient communication backbone for their entire organization. How is all of this translated into a product roadmap? I will let Joe take you through that. Over to you, Joe. Thank you, Aputa. So I wanted to pick up on something you said um, about fragmentation being the biggest customer pain point and something that we're doing uh, to alleviate this specifically. So you mentioned the word semantics, and this is key. We already have a very good connector ecosystem, and we're working actively on expanding that. But we really want to take things further. So I think across the board uh, with enterprise systems, whether it be content management or other systems, there can be still a sense of disconnectedness and lack of context. Uh, and now, of course, you can do wonderful things with APIs. We've got integrations out of the box and they're very good. But somehow there's a lack of sense of the underlying meaning of the data as we transport it. And just to give a little example of how that can manifest, because customers actually feel this, you know, you may think this is an implementation thing behind the scenes, but customers feel it. Um, and I was in this viewpoint of a customer. Um, so my wife is from Taiwan um, and we regularly take the family back to Taiwan. Um, so my kids are fairly small. A couple of years ago, they were smaller still. And I was looking on the Ch China Airlines site. Uh, for the information on the rules and regulations about traveling with kids. And I got to the relevant page. I got the information I need. Then I bought my tickets and we're good to go. However, a couple of weeks later, just by chance, I found there was another page on the China Airlines site um, that was an offering where you could add to your ticket and you could get three seats joined up in a row to be a bed for the kids on these long haul flights. Now these flights can be 14, 15 hours, so that would be quite a good thing to have. And I wondered why on earth, if they had this offering, did they not connect it to that other page? So I would have seen the offering and bought it at that time. And the reason, of course, is because it can be hard to connect things together. You know, they could add a manual hyperlink, but such things get out of date. And if you want to do this on any scale, um, you know, connecting a lot of related things, it just is hard to maintain. So this kind of disconnectedness pervades, I think, a lot of systems. And you can try to, of course, improve search experience with kind of uh, uh, search engines in a box. Um, and a lot of the time we hear the buzzword of machine learning and so on. Machine learning is fantastic. Um, but uh, these kind of boxes can be a little bit limited. They can take more work to set up than you anticipate. Um, and ultimately, they're limited to solving one problem, one specific task. And you may have other disconnects um, in routing content to the right people, in understanding it correctly in the first place when you ingest it into your system and so on. So we're looking to tackle this with semantic technology. And a buzzword these days is knowledge graphs. And it's the same kind of thing. Or you might have heard linked data as well, uh, the semantic web, all the same kind of family of technologies. And the critical thing about these is that they make an explicit knowledge model. We're working with taxonomies um, that really map out the content and what it fundamentally means. So this is a better way to do things. And not only are these taxonomies good for uh, mapping things uh, internally, but also to external systems, and I'll come to that. But first of all, once we're tagging up the content um, with a taxonomy, it's much easier to um, uh, get this more intelligent content uh, and make it work with chatbots, with conversational interfaces, and so on, uh, with automatically generating links um, um, 
in the kind of way I suggested with China Airlines, this could work as well. But it's also about routing content to the right people and tagging it correctly in the first place. Um, and we'll be talking over the next couple of days at some specific examples of how we're working with this. But it's not only internally, as I mentioned, it's also in the sense of working with external systems. So modern taxonomy is something that is truly federated. So it's not only about working with systems in your organization even, uh, but about sharing content and intelligence with other organizations and even the entire web if you want. And the way to work with it is that you understand what these concepts truly are that you're working with, these ideas, and they have you globally unique identifiers. And when I say global, I mean truly globally in that they will be unique across the web so that everybody can understand exactly what you're talking about in a machine readable way. So to enable this vision, we're working also with a technical partner. And that technical partner is the Semantic Web Company. And they're very well known in this field already in the areas of kind of uh, data integration, kind of big knowledge graphs, and doing all sorts of exciting things in these areas. But I think we are really the first to bring this um, to the field of kind of uh, content management, um, of experience management, of structured content, um, and so on. And we're baking in pro key product features to Tridian with this technology. So using the services from Semantic Web Company and their pool party platform um, to add value to our core product. So one area I want to focus on first, what's coming first in, in terms of this value and these features, very much looking to address the core problems that our users have or our customers users, um, the actual consumers of the content in the first place when they're trying to reach their goals. So the classic problem is, of course, search, as I, uh, as I mentioned. Um, and one of the big and classic ways to solve it is with faceted search, where you can very quickly drill to, down to the right information. And of course, you know, we all know this from kind of used car sites or um, Amazon or all sorts of sites use faceted search. Um, but you can use this to great effect with kind of more information-based content. And if you have already tagged it up in the first place correctly, you kind of get that those facets for free and it keeps everything in track. It's not something that you have to build separately after the fact and keep maintaining. But in addition to that, if we're tagging up content with not only uh, labels, but the ideas that they represent, and that's what modern taxonomy is about, then as you type in a search term, so I'm typing calf here um, and I get relevant suggestions for related concepts, um, related things to the same concept like leg and limb injuries um, and various kinds of pain and so on. And this is, of course, not just matching on the strings, but on the underlying ideas. And that's also possible to drive with these this semantic tagging. And finally, it's all very well landing from a search on a page that helps you, but very often with our customers, it's not just about one right resource, um, but enabling a, a connected journey through a variety of resources. And it might be different content types, white papers, videos, and so on, um, or just further information that you need to complete your task, whether it's a buying decision or something to help you in your job. And often, as I hinted earlier with the China Airlines case, you do not get these links or they're very hard to maintain. So also, by applying intelligence to the content in the first place, uh, you can very easily get suggestions for related content. And you can be quite sophisticated, in fact. You can say not only about the same subject matter, but the same user task, the same product and so on, and get the intersection of all of these uh, to make very, very precise and useful recommendations even without you know, too much customer data. Customer data helps, uh, but in the first place, even on the content tagging, you can get good recommendations. So talking about tagging, how are we going to enable all this? You know, It's no good having a great customer experience if it adds greatly to the content team's burden in dealing with this. So now Arno is going to talk through how we're enabling this for content teams. All right, thank you, Joe. Uh, Joe just showed where we are planning to deliver value to the end customers uh, by prov providing more relevant content uh, to let those end users reach their goals quickly. Um, for all of this, it's important to semantically enrich your content with smart taxonomies in order for Trillion to act as the intelligent content platform and future-proof your content uh, to get the most out of it. Now let's take a look at the productivity announcements that we're planning for to, to help content teams uh, reach their goal to properly tag their content. Um, so we have developed this prototype, 
based on the capabilities we can offer in Tridium with our partner Semantic Web Company uh, and their product Pool Party. Um, we start by either editing or creating new content. Uh, and in this case, I have existing content that I want to tag. So I open up this component and after going into edit mode, I can update the content or its metadata. In this case, there is a multi-value keyword field that is connected to a taxonomy uh, that is managed in pool party. And you can see it here. We click on the get tags uh, button and now the content gets analyzed and we get a list, list of suggested tags back. Uh, some of the concepts are obvious. Um, for example, solar panels and monocrystalline cells. Um, those are, uh, you know, literally in the content. Uh, so that's, that's an easy, um, easy match. Uh, other concepts can basically be inferred from the text that is used in the contents, such as flat roof insulation, um, because the text mentioned that this type of solar panel is perfect for residence extensions, for, in for instance. Um, and it can also happen that some concepts are just not rele relevant, like ingots. So I remove that one. But I do want to manually add nanocrystalline cells. So let me type that in and select that um, because that because I think that's a, a relevant concept to add before I actually finish editing. And this is how we can get um, help with um, you know the use of smart tagging from pool party uh, you know and get these uh, these tag suggestions in and and uh, still allow for the user to determine what is important to classify this content with. So now let's have a look at the Tridian Roadmap themes for 2021. We've just presented our ideas around uh, increasing conversions and driving customer success uh, with the content findability scenarios that were mentioned by, by Joe and the smart tagging suggestions that I just showed. Uh, and this all falls under the first theme, which is drive customer success with AI for content. So even though sites and docs will continue to have specific development streams across, uh, across them, um, it's important to realize that we're building these great new features jointly uh, on top of the overall Trillion platform. So for the next theme, make authors and editors more product productive. Uh, this theme covers all the extended functionality and user experience that we're working on for both Trillion sites and docs. You already have seen the smart tagging example, uh, but for Trillion sites, we're further developing experience space beyond the basic editorial needs that we already released in 9.5 in, back in August. We will be adding advanced editor functionality here uh, with additional usability improvements and also evaluating customer uh, feedback to prior prioritize other scenarios um, to make experience space the default editor for more and more of our valued customers. For Trillion Dogs, we're working hard on dynamic change tracking uh, features and a lot of effort in 2021 will also go into developing a new user interface, which we'll call Organize Space. So this brings a simple and modern experience, uh, also based in the Graphene design language, uh, and it's planned to release in 2022. The next theme is expanding the connector ecosystem. So the Trillion integration framework standardizes the way Trillion integrates with other technology tools in the customer's IT landscape. Uh, to help build smarter experiences across channels and touch points. In 2021, we will be looking to expand our uh, connector ecosystem and add connectors for uh, marketing and automation, uh, marketing resource management with a Primo uh, to support campaign planning and content creation, uh, digital quality management uh, with Site Improve for insights into content quality and content performance. Uh, and enterprise content management specifically requested by life sciences customers, uh, where Tridian Docs customers can publish the final output prepared uh, by Tridian to an external system of records, such as SharePoint or Viva. The fourth theme is keeping track of entitlements, and we're planning for a new way to track customer entitlements, which in turn uh, basically paves the way for new licensing models, such as paper use and other things. Uh, the goal for updating our licensing tool is to make it easier for customers to distribute the necessary licenses to the many servers that can be involved in the Trillion setup uh, and by removing manual labor. So in the case of updates to the entitlement for a customer, uh, seamless promotion of the entitlement uh, should, be, uh, should be there to the customer's environment. Uh, again, without having people to manually uh, be involved and request uh, uh, or deploy licenses in the environments. 
And the last theme is about updating key architecture. Um, and Joe, do you want to talk about the last theme a little bit more? Thank you, Anna. Yes, so on Trillion Docs, um, we are doing some key work to keep the platform modern and relevant and easy for IT teams to work with. So one key part of that is revamping the traditional web client. And this is now going to be called Organized Space. This is the kind of admins and admin and setting and folder management zone. So we're revamping that in terms of the look and feel, make it simpler and more modern, as Anna already mentioned. Uh, but behind the scenes, really changing the underlying technology technology um, and making it a modern and more cloud friendly thing. Um, and as part of that, we're using a new API. Now this is privately to start off with, uh, but we're testing out a new API and that will be what we use um, with this new web client. The next step after that on this uh, roadmap to um, the architecture update is making that API public. So it's based on the open API standard and that will make it a lot easier to work with and do customizations, extensions and this kind of thing. Um, and then finally, we're also looking at uh, implementing modern authentication to enable things like single sign on multi factor. Uh, sorry, not single sign on, but multi factor authentication and so on. Uh, so it's a path to get there. We're doing it in stages, but this is a key thing that we're focusing on. And Dave DeMeyer has a talk on this later today. So thank you all. I'd like to thank you very much for attending. Um, and Arno and I look forward to interacting with you across the next couple of days. Um, and I think we've got time for a few more questions. I've seen some questions have been coming in and we've got time for a few more questions now. Thanks. <laughs>